We'll head into the bedrooms next and show you how we styled those for this season. Welcome to our spring primary bedroom. This look is all about the headboard wall. We are working with a tight square footage and you see when you open the door, we only have a few inches before we hit a nightstand. One of the biggest mistakes I see in small bedroom designs is people just shove all of the bedroom furniture into the corner and they don't consider maximizing every inch so that they can get a focal point. And here we have nightstands on either side of this queen bed. A king bed wouldn't have allowed us to walk comfortably around the edges of the room. And so a queen it is, and then you see I used every inch possible to fit in a nightstand that has a nice scale to it. The great thing about measuring and taping everything out is that you can make sure that you're filling everything as much as possible and not going too small in your small room with furniture. This bed is such a highlight for me. It is a reddish brown ticking stripe fabric on the headboard and when you see it from the profile it has this pulled corner with pleats and then it has a wood bed frame that has a great leg detail. I'm going to show you right here. How cool is that? I think the great thing about the pattern on the headboard is one, we're getting color, but two, it goes with a lot. We did this reddish brown ticking stripe and it pairs seamlessly with whites, browns. You could pair it with a floral. Stripes go with everything. And so this is a great way to be bold, be expressive and make a statement, but not regret that decision in a few years. I love the way we've styled this bed because it has a lot of layers and it's a lot of pattern mixing. When we talk about pattern mixing, we always just kind of refer to it in terms of pillows, but it can be more than that and it can, you know, carry into your furniture as well. So part of our pattern mixing is actually happening in the headboard here and then we've layered a solid raw silk pillow with then this floral stripe and the check and then we have this amazing new blanket i am i, I i'm in love this blanket practically brought me to tears. It's reversible, so you get the cream and the gray on the one side, but this is the main side with this gray and it has just a gorgeous hand feel and a really great drape. When I'm looking at blankets to style, I wanted to have a good drape and the reason for that is because I think it makes your bed look more cozy and inviting when everything just kind of like isn't so stiff. We have paired that relaxed look with a crisper bedding and it has a double flange detail here with this great contrast stitch and then another blanket i love to layer my bedding this is cream and it's textural and i think it actually adds a little bit of a pattern without being loud leaning into that pattern mixing look we often talk about pattern mixing in terms of pillows, which is great, but it also extends beyond the pillows and carries into your furniture and rugs. Here we have a mix of patterns on our blanket and pillows, but then we have a ticking stripe on the bed and then another pattern on our rug. You know you've hit the mark with pattern mixing when it feels easy and effortless. This new rug, it's a hand knotted rug and it mixes warm and cool tones together, which makes it very versatile. Another thing I love about it is that the gray in the background of this rug kind of has a heathered quality to it. So you're getting little flecks of a darker tone throughout. 
This is our new Alessandro collection. We're showing it here in nightstands. It also comes in a dresser. And I love this collection so much because it is full of great details. So we have these brass drop poles, which we're seeing drop poles really trend in uh, the finishes uh, in design. So uh, kitchens, bathrooms, and in furniture, we made sure that we did one that gives you that traditional quality, but is also paired back enough that it can transition between aesthetics. And that is the case for every detail that we've incorporated into this nightstand. You're getting these taller legs and then this great kind of like eased corner. And this is a traditional leg shape that is just paired back so that you're getting that modern charm that we really leaned into for this season. I think that the tone on this nightstand is a great medium tone. So it's oak and it will pair well with darker and uh, bleached tones as well. On the opposite side of the room, we created a little sitting area and this is our Magda settee. And the Magda chair is easily one of our best selling chairs. And so this size is a great option because it works in so many different places. Whether you say settee or sete, it doesn't matter. But sometimes I think people are afraid to use them because it sounds fancy and then they don't know how to incorporate them into their homes. But the great thing about this size is that it is so versatile. If you have a smaller living room, this works as a love seat. They also work at the foot of a bed or you can you know, put it alone in a bedroom when you have a little bit of overflow space. The nice thing about a settee is that the depth isn't as deep as a traditional sofa. And so it allows you to get a comfortable accent seat without taking up so much square footage. In the kids' bedroom, we have a two twin bed look. And when I am designing kids' spaces with two twin beds, I often opt to do one larger nightstand in the middle so that it centers the space and also breaks up the pairs. If I was to do a nightstand here, 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 and here, that's a lot. And then you add in two twin beds and it's so many pairs. So I like to have a central focal point if the room allows for it. And then I think that the rug also provides that centering function. This is a very cute rug that we just launched. It's a checkered jute and wool rug and it's uh, the materiality that creates that checkered pattern. You can see that we did quite a few checkers in here and it totally works because we have kept with a tight color palette. So from the ottomans to even this little detail on the pillow and then the bedding, I often get pretty flowery with my color palettes and there will be, you know, 10 different colors in the pillows and um, everything surrounding the room. But in here we have a dark and a light blue look and then we mixed in some neutrals and I think that it becomes very impactful uh, by doing that. I wouldn't say I would keep two two colors in every single room but I think that choosing a few areas in your home to do that is a really refreshing look. Sometimes when you see something styled in a kid's room it's hard to imagine it in a more grown-up location but so many of these pieces would translate well in other living rooms or bedrooms this ticking stripe bolster i love i love a bolster pillow they work great at the front of the bed but you could also use them oh our little bear fell um, you could also use them at the ends of a bench or a sofa for a different pillow combination look I also love this bedding. This is a chambray material and it has a contrast edge. 
It gives you that like hotel bedding look in a more relaxed way to have this double flange happening. It comes in the white with the dark contrast and then the tone on tone blue. This nightstand is another one of those pieces that we've styled in a kid's setting today, but we use this in guest bedrooms and primary bedrooms all at the time. Add modern charm to your own home. You can shop all these pieces and more at McGee & Co.